Hello, my name is Dr. Joseph Raja and welcome to this lesson segment which explains the answers to a recent exam question on oscillating balls. This question begins by telling us that a ball attached to a cord of length 1.20 meters swings back and forth like a pendulum. Part A asks us to show that the period of a pendulum of length 1.20 meters oscillating in simple harmonic motion is 2.20 seconds. Paying attention to the key words simple harmonic motion, it is clear that we need to apply the equation t is equal to 2 pi root l on g to calculate its period and we know L is 1.20 meters. Remember to check that L is in meters when applying this equation and since L was already given as 1.20 meters a conversion isn't required. So when substituted T is equal to 2 times pi times square root of 1.20 divided by 9.81 which is the value of g in SI units. This works out to give the period t as 2.1975. When rounded to three significant figures this is 2.20 seconds. Part b. Explain what must be done to ensure that the motion of the ball approximates simple harmonic motion. Now this is something very standard that you need to know about any type of simple harmonic motion. This is that the amplitude of oscillation needs to be kept sufficiently small for the size of the restoring force to stay proportional to the size of the displacement from the undisturbed or equilibrium position. So whether it is a mass oscillating on a spring, a swinging pendulum or a particle oscillating up and down on a string or a water surface, the size of the restoring force stops being directly proportional to the size of the displacement once the displacement becomes too large. In the case of a pendulum, the motion is usually considered to approximate well to a true simple harmonic motion provided that the angle is less than about 10 degrees. So the answer can be worded as the angle of swing needs to be kept small enough for the size of the restoring force pulling it back towards the equilibrium position to be directly proportional to the size of its displacement. Part C asks us to sketch what happens to the ball's total energy over time until it stops swinging. While it oscillates, the ball gradually loses energy as a result of the friction due to collisions with air molecules while swinging. Energy dissipation due to air friction is greater when the speed is faster. This is something you just need to know. Energy dissipation due to air friction is greater when the speed of an object is faster. Since the ball moves fastest initially, this is also when it loses energy fastest. As it slows down later, the rate at which it loses energy also decreases. Okay, because this is an energy against time graph, the size of the slope represents the rate of energy loss. Because energy is being lost, energy decreases with time and this makes the slope negative. So we start drawing this with the largest negative slope initially when its speed is fastest and that's when it loses energy at the fastest rate. The size of this negative slope gradually decreases after that as the speed decreases because energy is lost more slowly when it moves slower. 
Eventually, it stops swinging altogether once all its energy is lost. So that's how we get this particular shape for this graph. We can also use this opportunity to discuss a graph that shows total energy, kinetic energy and potential energy for an ideal simple harmonic motion of any type. By ideal, I mean that there aren't any energy losses due to dissipative forces such as friction. Now, this is why total energy stays constant, simply because energy isn't dissipated by having to do work against dissipative forces like friction. So, with any simple harmonic motion, the kinetic energy is largest when the object passes through its rest or equilibrium position because this is when it is traveling fastest. Once it goes past that point, the restoring force tries to pull it back to the equilibrium position with a force that increases with increasing distance away from the equilibrium position. So this makes kinetic energy to decrease while moving away from the equilibrium position. The gradient of the kinetic energy against distance also increases in magnitude as distance increases because the larger restoring force that acts when further away also means that a greater amount of kinetic energy gets expended to do the greater amount of work that needs to be done against a larger restoring force when moving through the same distance while further away. This decrease in kinetic energy gets converted into a corresponding gain in potential energy, which is exactly what we expect to happen by the energy conservation principle. So, at the extremities of the oscillation, all the kinetic energy has been converted to potential energy and the speed is momentarily zero. So, when at the extremities of oscillation, that is maximum amplitude, is also when the restoring force and the acceleration are greatest in magnitude and potential energy is also largest. Then, as the object moves back towards the equilibrium position, the reverse happens. Potential energy decreases and this decrease in potential energy gets converted to a corresponding gain in its kinetic energy, part D. This asks us to explain how gently shaking the top of the string can make the ball at the bottom oscillate in simple harmonic motion. The phenomenon that makes this happen is resonance and the answer can be stated as follows. If the frequency of the back and forth shaking of the top of the string matches the frequency of oscillation of this pendulum. Energy from the shaking goes into providing the kinetic energy for the oscillation of this pendulum. Now, this is an example of the general phenomenon of resonance when the driving frequency of an oscillation, that's the frequency with which we did the shaking in this particular instance, matches a natural frequency of a system like the frequency of oscillation of this pendulum here, but this can even be a swing or a stretch string or an air column, etc. And then the energy driving the oscillation goes into increasing energy of the oscillating system. And this is what produces an increase in the amplitude of the oscillations. Part E reminds us what a restoring force is and then asks us to discuss what provides the restoring force in this situation and in doing so to refer to these three points in particular. There are two forces acting on the ball. These are the constant weight force due to gravity, W, which is equal to mg, acting vertically downwards, and the string tension force, T, 
which changes with the angle theta. I have now drawn a vector diagram that shows the head to tail addition of these two vectors W and T. The angle between the head of W and the tail of T is theta because W is along the vertical and the tension which is along the string makes an angle theta to the vertical. Now complete the vector addition triangle by drawing the resultant R from the tail of W to the head of T, keeping in mind that this resultant is the restoring force that makes simple harmonic motion possible and it needs to be along the tangent to the circular path. From this diagram, we can see that T is equal to mg cos theta because cos theta decreases as theta increases from zero degrees, tension force T decreases as the angle theta increases. So with reference to our diagram, we can write that there are two forces acting on the ball. These are the constant weight force W equal to mg and the tension force T equal to mg cos theta, which decreases as the angle theta increases. From our vector triangle, we can also see that the resultant force R acting tangential to the circular path is mg sine theta because sine theta increases as theta increases the resultant force R that pulls the object towards the equilibrium position increases with the angle theta. So it satisfies the requirement for a restoring force needed for simple harmonic motion. That completes the answer to this question and you should now have a good understanding of simple harmonic motion in relation to an oscillating pendulum.